beautiful people, come on in. Hey, people. Good evening, mi gente. What's going on, people? We're listening to Sam Hen Show right now. I'm waiting for my friend Chris to come on in. Let me get my hydration going. Hey, beautiful people. Hey, Matt. How are you doing, darling? Hi, homegirl Jazz. How are you guys doing this evening? What's good? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday. I'm listening to Sam Henshaw. Do you guys like Sam Henshaw? I love him. He's an R&B artist out of the UK. Come on, Chris. Do I need to invite you, Chris? Here, I'll invite you, Chris. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can get him. Oh, there we go. Hey, beautiful people. Come on in. Come on in. What y'all drinking tonight? I'm keeping it simple. Usually I have tea, but tonight it's just H2. Oh, Chris, where are you? There he is. Hey, buddy. What? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? How you doing? <laughs> I love the grand entrance. <laughs> slide in. It's like slide to the left. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you got to slide in on him like. Chris, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you got to give a grand intro for a grand person. <laughs> hey, Tina. That's my boo. Hey, Tina. Hey, beautiful people. Good evening. For those who don't know, this is my dear friend, Chris Monroe from St. Louis, Missouri. Am I saying that correct, Chris? That's right. St. Louis. I hear some people say St. Louis or something. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. St. Louis, the STL. Matter of fact, hold on. You can't see my tattoo, but I ain't going to show it. I can't see it. <laughs> so you right can't even see it. That's all right. <laughs> How you doing today? I am lovely. Hold on, hold on. I think we have to give a huge applause to Amap. He says, I closed on my first duplex last Friday. It already had a tenant. I found another to rent the other side this past Friday. That's what I'm talking about, Amap. Congratulations to you, my friend. That's major. Congratulations. Nice. That's right. Success. Exactly. Exactly. So, for my beautiful people who are not aware, hey, Mike, that's my buddy out of California. For those of you who aren't familiar with Chris, Chris, tell the people who you are and what you do. So basically what I do is I'm a creative real estate investor. I just started about 13 months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I started wholesaling. I actually found out about real estate and wholesaling from Max Maxwell, bumped into one of his videos and said, what's wholesaling? <laughs> started looking up all that stuff found out what it was, and I've closed 17 wholesale deals since then. I hold nine properties, and I've only been in the game about 13 months. So uh, I came in the game swinging pretty hard. Yeah, you did. You did. You, there was some serious savagery there, my friend. That's, that's no joke. I never feel like I'm doing enough, though, you know. But here's my question to you, though. Did you start with a million dollars in your pocket? How did you get started? No, 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 no. I actually started, I spent about maybe $1,000. So I came in a little bit different from most people because, you know, when they come into this business, they think that everything's free and you're going to get in because, you know, you can do all this free stuff, which is free is cool. But I come from a business background. Mm -hmm. So I knew that to, be, to make it into a business, I wanted to go ahead and set it up as a business, set up websites, set up, you know, systems to get leads in. You know, particular things like that. So that's how I was able to kind of scale it up pretty quickly. That's really cool. Huh? Hey, Quality QC. Sorry, I'm just welcoming all my people into the into the party tonight. But here's my <laughs> thing, though. You started that. What were you doing before? So basically, here I have a, a resale shop. So I sell furniture, collectibles, antique stuff like that, flat screen TVs, anything you can think of that goes into a house, I sell it. And I'm also an, act, an auctioneer. So twenty five, not thirty five, not forty five, not so. You never saw a black <laughs> auctioneer, have you? So yeah. So I sell stuff. So it was like flipping paper with real estate. I could do that. You know what I mean? So it was kind of easy for me. So that's what I tell people who already are working in the sales positions or any type of sales skills or negotiation skills. This real estate stuff should be a lot easier for them because they already know how to sell per se. Then tell me about your first deal. Tell me about your first time. So, yeah, my very first deal came off of a bandit sign, you know, a little sign they put on the side of the road to say, we buy houses. Uh -huh. A guy called me up. He said, yeah, well, I want to sell my house. I don't want it no more. It's empty. And uh, I was like, man, well, where is it at? It was on another side of town. I have signs on south part of St. Louis, and this, came, this house was in the northern part. Yeah. So I basically uh, was wondering, like, how do you even get my number? Whatever. Let's put them through the process, ask them the questions. You know, you know, tell me about the house, all this stuff, right? 
So I asked him all these questions. I said, all right, let me uh, run some numbers. I'll contact you right back. So I'm looking at the house, and I'm thinking, like, man, this house in the hood. I don't know. I don't know if anybody even going to buy this house. ARV, like, 35000 or something, like, maybe thirty, thirty-five, real cheap. So I'm like, man, I don't know. But whatever. I ain't never did a deal. I'm just going to put it through and see what I can do. So I did some research to see that, uh, you know, the rents go for about 600 bucks a month. So I said, well, 600 times 12, one year's worth of income, 7,200 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll offer him. Because he was saying he wanted 12,000 or something like that. And I was like, yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing any of that. You know, I want to go low. I want him to say no and leave me alone. Yeah. So I said, yeah, would you consider, I called him back 10 minutes later and asked him, would you consider 7,200 on this deal? And he said, well, yeah, I think we can do that. So I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went too high. You know, if you tell, if you put an offer out there and they accept it right out the gate, you went too high already. But, you know, rookie mistake, no biggie. So I sent him the DocuSign. Now, mind you, I never saw this house. I never met the seller. I never did none of this. All this was virtual. I still never met this guy to this day. I wouldn't know him if I seen him walking down the street. So um, I sent him the DocuSign. He signed it in 10 minutes or less, sent it right back, had it under contract. So I went straight to work, started looking for a buyer, sent it all out. People were looking for it, you know, looking at it. I put it on Facebook, Craigslist, Offer Up, Let Go, uh, My House Deals, uh, Bigger Pockets. I put it on all the sites. You can pretty much put it on all the Facebook groups with local investors here in St. Louis. Yeah. Nobody wanted the deal because I sent it out for 12500 thinking that, well, if the buyer wanted that much, it must be worth at least that much because he was an investor. So, <laughs> so I'm like, well, he must know it must be worth at least that much. So I sent it on out for 12500 Nobody wanted it for like two, three weeks went by. But I locked it up for 45 days because I already knew I've been watching videos and stuff from YouTube University to know to lock it up and give yourself enough time, especially when you don't have a buyer's list. So I locked it up for 45 days out. So uh, basically after that went through, um, I, I kept pushing it out, pushing it out. Nobody wanted it. So I said, dang, what am I going to do? So I dropped the price. To so ninety five hundred, I dropped it three thousand dollars. I went from twelve five to ninety five hundred. Saying somebody got to get this because I'm running out of time. Yeah. So lo and behold, some guy came on a Craigslist. He called me up and said, "Yeah, I want that house. I want to get my buddy to come see it." Now, mind you, I never met this guy either. I never met the buyer. I never met the seller, but I did go see the house. So this guy, he <laughs> sent the representative over to see the house. So instead of me sending him on a lot box like I did some other people, I said, "No, nah, I'm going to meet him because I want to go." Sell him the deal. I say, sell him the dream. Get this deal, man. It's good for you. It's a good investment. Because I don't know. I'm just trying to sell it. So I go over there and I meet the representative for the property. And so I'm thinking that, you know, they looking at it like, yeah, look all right. Don't look bad. And he's taking pictures and sending it back to the uh, actual buyer. The actual buyer contacts me back later that afternoon and said, yeah, I'll give you 9000 for it. I'm looking like, well, I got under contract for 7200 so, yeah. Sold. How quick yeah. can you close? <laughs> So I went on and uh, got him locked up. We closed it in about a week from there. We bet the deadline. And actually, the day that he signed the uh, assignment agreement and stuff, the buy the actual seller actually called me like, yeah, what's going on? What's taking so long? I'm like, oh, yeah, we're ready to go. We got the paperwork in. It all happened just on time. So we got him closed up. Never met the seller. Never met the buyer. Made $1,800 on my first wholesale deal. And I was off to the races from there because it was real to me from that point. Yeah, that's pretty solid, sir. See, that's a long story, but <laughs> thanks for that one heart. Somebody accidentally gave a heart. <laughs> this accident. No, Thank no, you for the heart. half a heart in this month. He he <laughs> What's up, Deidre? That's real, yeah. though. That's real. Now, here's my thing. From the moment you heard about wholesaling to you closing your first deal, about how long was that ballpark? Uh, about 40 days, something like that, give or take. That's 30, 40 days. Valid. But I actually had a deal. I had a deal in the contract my first week. From another lady that was on her way to St. Louis. She was coming from Colorado, coming back to St. Louis just to sell her house. And I got her under contract for what she owed on it, but it wasn't low enough. Or maybe I just didn't know what I was doing because it was my first deal. Okay. So my first three deals didn't go through. Hmm. And that's not to count the other maybe 15 deals or so that and, didn't go through anyway. Okay, and let's go there. Let's talk about the ugly deals because people love to talk about the pretty deals and flash these checks. No. Let's get real. Let's talk about the trauma. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Seriously. Yeah, my best deal that didn't go through. You want to know about that? Yeah, that's what I want to know about. That's what, that's what people Oh, my mean. God. Best deal. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Why did this happen to me? So, bandit sign. Another deal coming off of a bandit sign. She calls in. She wants to sell it. I go over and meet the lady because she's older, so she don't do all this internet stuff. Yeah. So, I go and meet her, build rapport, go through the house, know her whole story, her, her, uh, 
not husband, but her boyfriend died. She had a boyfriend for like, I don't know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. But they're both on the title. He's dead. She's still on the title. She wants to sell the house. Okay. I lock it up with her for 100000 Locks up the house. Nice big old house in South St. Louis. And I had actual a buyer come out. I had two buyers come out to this house the next day to see it. They're my contractors. You know, I have to have your contractors come take a look at the property. Mm -hmm. So they come on out and look at it. And so... By me having both of them there, one of them was like, yeah, come on, talk to me right quick. Get in my car. So he started talking to me. Yeah, what we got to do to get this? So I put it under, I put it under contract, like I said, for 100000 I sent it out to try to sell it for one thirty three, which was a tax value. Okay. You know, this is still in the beginning. I still don't really know what I'm doing that much. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm put off a tax value, one thirty three, and see what happened. And trying to make a $33,000 deal. So I send, that, I send it out, get these two buyers to come look at it. The buyer... He sees the other guy likes it, but the other guy's still thinking about it. Oh, let me think and let me, you know, procrastinate. So the other guy, like, I want to lock it up right now because I know he wants it. So he's, you know, greedy. So he go ahead and he put it up uh, for 125 mm -hmm. I got it locked up with an end bar for 125 He put $6,000 non-refundable down. Okay. We get it in the escrow, ready to close, and guess what? Pop! That dang on dead man messes up my deal. What? So the guy that died that was on the title... That's not her husband. That that you know, it had a, a basically he's on there, you know. So his his heirs have to sign off since they were not married. Oh, crap. title it problem. Didn't, it didn't really go through the probate process because if, if it would have gone through the entire probate process, I think you, you would have known this ahead of time, wouldn't you? Well, they didn't. We didn't. I didn't know anything about it having to go through probate because yeah. I thought she was the owner, but it was her and him on there. Mm -hmm. So with him being on her and him being dead, you're thinking like, oh, because she told me yeah that they were together. So I'm thinking they were married, but they were not married. Uh, so okay. it really didn't default to her. She only owned half of the house. So we had to get her three children to sign off on the paperwork um, to basically do it. So this thing got stretched out for a long time. But I already got the deal sold. I'm like, damn, I got a $25,000 check coming on the deal. It was quick and easy. I'm smiling. I'm counting the money. But I never got to closing on it. So basically, we ended up not doing the deal because they had title issues and things like that. So we couldn't get that deal to the finish line. Now, were you even able to get in contact with the heirs, the sons, or the, the and they said no? No, no, no. They were good. It's just that it was the complexity of it. They okay. just, they, the title company, her, everybody was just so like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't, I mean, I'm trying to make it go through, but, you know, I can only do so much. And so basically she ended up not selling the house. She still owns it. So until we get all the stuff done to get them off, get the dead person off the deed. So, you know, title work makes a big difference in this game. So it was nothing I did wrong. I did everything right on my book. You know, get the house, found the house, locked up the house low, sold the house, had non-refundable in, ready to go, ready to win, and punch me in my chin. <laughs> so oh, yes. I was like, God, why? Why me? But, you know, deals happen. I mean, I lost probably, I left maybe thirty or $40,000 in assignment fees in 2018 just because of title issues and other crazy stuff like that that's all right oh tina is asking where are you located i'm located i'm located in st louis the stl st louis missouri right in the middle in the heartland now let me ask you this tell me a little bit more about your market what is the st louis market like uh, St. Louis is more, it's a really friendly investor market, to be honest with you. A lot of people from the coast, like West Coast or East Coast, California, Florida, New York, they invest here because you can get houses here for little to nothing. I have a house on the contract right now for $5,800. You know what I mean? When you can buy houses I'm that sorry, cheap. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 sir. Can you please repeat that again, please? $5,800. I got a house on the contract for that right now. <laughs> you have to just laugh. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so it deals here. You know, it just depends on where you want to be. You know, you can buy houses for little or nothing. Then you know what I mean? If that's the case, then if I was buying a newly built property in a prime area in St. Louis, how much would that run, ballpark? Uh, just a basic a basic house, just standard, uh, yeah. eighty to 100000 I know, Provado Life Lord, they already know. <laughs> you might hear from Provado Life. <laughs> Yes. That's right. Yeah, it's really friendly here for uh, investors. So yes. especially if you do Section 8 or if you do any type of buy and hold, just rental stuff, a lot of renters here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really friendly as far as the real estate goes. Okay. Look, you got Mike. Look and see. Mike will buy a house out there, too. Everybody see? Bring that money in. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, DM Chris Monroe because he's your guy out in St. Louis. 
Keys, yeah, and I come across a lot of them. Yeah, I come across a lot of those deals because we got a lot of marketing out. So um, over the time, like I said, I've been doing this about 13, 14 months now. Mm -hmm. So I'm still really new, but I, you know, I learned a lot because I study hard. And that's what I want to make sure everybody else that's watching that hasn't closed their first deal, work on yourself. Get good at this stuff because, you know, you, you'll find out that people around you really don't know a lot. You know, you'll find out you're helping other wholesalers, you're helping real estate agents, you're helping a title company. Like, damn, you don't know that. I just got here and you don't know this. It's basic. You know, silly stuff. So, you know, work hard and study this game because there's no secrets anymore. But then at this, oh, I love that. There's no secrets anymore. Oh, I love that. Look, that's right. She said, I just follow Chris. Yeah, everybody stop what you do and follow Chris right now. He's your guy. He's good people to know. Chris is your guy. I don't put, you know, I only put real people on these lives. Now, here's the thing, Chris. Let's dive into that to help the people who are interested in wholesaling, interesting in investing because I feel like, of course, as you know, wholesaling is just one aspect of this large umbrella that is investing, right? Real estate investing. So, yeah, some people can easily get niche into being a one-trick pony, right? They say, okay, I'm a flipper. Okay, I'm a wholesaler. No. To be a full investor is to have a full knowledge base of the, the entire system, right? So what are some basic things that you think that people should know to be an educated investor no matter where their market is? Yeah, know, you know, know, what, know your position and know what the next person's position is in the cycle. Because, you know, you may define a deal as a wholesaler and say, well, it's a wholesale deal or it's not a wholesale deal. Many of the deals, to be honest with you, will not qualify for wholesale yes. deals. Oh, but you got to yes. remember, you're spending money on marketing, you know, cold calling, time, energy, effort, resources on finding these deals. And then these people come to you and you can't help them because the only thing you can do is wholesale. You're in trouble. Yeah. You don't want to be a one-trick pony like you just said. Yeah. You want to be able to actually help these people because the more people help, the more people that you help, the more money you'll make and the more results you'll have that make you more successful in life. Exactly. We'll see. So, oh, no, go ahead, darling. Yeah, so that's basically uh, the biggest thing. So, you know, so that's why I started learning more about subject to, mm -hmm. uh, sub buying houses subject to existing financing, wraparound mortgages, um, lease options, land trust, all this different stuff. I actually created a free Facebook group that goes over all this stuff all the time called Woke Real Estate Investors on Facebook. Yeah, y'all just -E. doing that. Join, I just joined, yeah. what was it, yesterday? When we talked. Yeah, yes. and it's a lot of content in there that breaks yes, down. We actually is. help people through deals. Actually, I even go on video with people. No, keep talking. I'm just going to write yeah, I even Yeah, I even go through videos with people to actually help them walk them through the deal that they're working on. Cause, you know it can get complex you know it's a little more advanced yeah. but there's no reason not to learn it because you're leaving money on the table when somebody come to you for your help and you can't solve their problem no. so i definitely say just to step your game up on more than just learning wholesaling now once again the facebook group is called woke real estates what so woke w-o-k-e real estate investors matter of fact i might even can type it in if it's easier let's see here okay. is that easier so for you? over here you write it i'll pin it yeah, guys, make sure to follow space. his or join his Facebook group. It is awesome. It's really, really awesome. On Facebook. It's a free group, so, you know, you got to pay for everything these days. You know that. But now this one's free. <laughs> I give back to the community. I like to give back. I appreciate that. I deeply did. Okay, I pinned it. So, okay, here's the thing. How did you learn about creative, creative real estate investing? And before you answer that question, let me pull back and say, how did you learn about creative real estate investing? Well, just like what I just said, you're spending money, you're spending time, energy, effort, and marketing dollars all the time to attract these motivated sellers. Yes. If I'm going to attract you, I want to be able to help you when you come. I don't want to say, well, you don't meet Mayo or the maximum allowable offer on a project or on a house. I got to let you go or I'll refer you to a real estate agent who can't help them either. And some of these deals that I've actually done that are creative, a real estate agent can help them. A wholesaler couldn't help them. Only a creative real estate investor like me could help them. A transaction engineer that actually made something out of nothing. A transaction engineer. I'm going to add that to my LinkedIn profile. I'm a transaction engineer. I like that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's what you got to do. So like I say, you got to actually help these people and provide value to them because they come into you and you're supposed to be the expert. Yeah. You know, you may not know everything. Now, I'm not saying you have to know all the answers of everything, but, you know, actually have more tools in your tool belt than just that one little wholesale thing. Yeah. Now, okay. So you learn all the tools in your tool belt, but let's keep it raw and 100 here. At what point did you feel like, 
I need to talk to a real estate lawyer, lawyer before I delve into doing X, Y, and Z. Because let's talk about this. Legislation is getting tighter in the world of real estate. I want to mm -hmm. plead by the rules. I don't look good in an orange jumpsuit. Blue is more no. like blue, not orange. So. <laughs> exactly. Have you ever but, consulted? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so every deal I do that's creative where there's a long-term relationship between me and a seller or me and a buyer or anybody that's always closed through a real estate attorney, always. Okay. They pay that fee. I don't even pay it. So I try to close through a real estate attorney so that I'm protected in the deal. So even if I did something wrong or there was an error, there's a layer of protection. They got, if I'm going to court, he coming with me. I'm not going by myself. Because real estate and business is a team sport. See, a lot of people try to go into this stuff alone. Like, I'm the know-it-all and I can save everybody myself with my cape on. It ain't going to happen. You got to bring some good people on your team so you can live the great American dream. Uh, you know, you better come through with the sayings, Chris. <laughs> oh, see, you know, you're going to hear some people stealing my riffs in a minute now. <laughs> but I don't mind it. It helps it be memorable. You put that on a t-shirt. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, I like to make stuff memorable so that it actually sticks in your mind to remember when the time comes up that you can execute the, the things that you need to execute. Yeah. Oh, um, Amat just asked, um, so that's the reason why you use an attorney and not a title company? Well, Amat, first of all, before you answer that, every closing, every state has different rules as to what entity you can close under. I shouldn't say entity, but what source you use to close. Um, for instance, I'm in the state of Virginia. We have title companies, and there's also, of course, real estate attorneys as well. Some are attorney states. In your state, is it an attorney state, Chris? So state of Missouri is a title company it's state. Title company. However, the title companies have an attorney on staff. Exactly. They all have all, one on staff. All title companies do. Uh-huh. Exactly. But to keep I, them so compliant. That, exactly. Exactly. But to add further clarification for AMAP, you are saying that you utilize a real estate attorney for all of your creative deals because it adds a layer of protection. And of course, having an attorney look over the contracts, they can see, ah, oh, Chris, that's not cool. You need to change X, Y, Z to make sure everything is laid out to the letter of the law. Is that correct? Exactly. Because the biggest thing when it comes to these creative deals is disclose. Just like being a real estate agent, disclose, disclose, disclose. Yes. I'm disclosing. If I'm buying your house on a subject too, I want you to know that this loan is going to stay in your name until sometime in the future. I don't know when. It's going to stay on your credit report. Yes. You know, everything's disclosed. So you're not like, oh, he tricked me. Because you can do these deals. You can actually close a deal without going through a real estate attorney. But I would never suggest anybody do that. No. All you really need is a notary. Be but disaster. Yeah, you want to have your stuff self protected, most yeah. definitely. Look at Provado Life. They said, oops, sorry, my camera, y'all. <laughs> He said he's writing it down. <laughs> you about to get he's a taking copious <laughs> notes. <laughs> I think he's a shirt. <laughs> that's right. Take good notes because, you know, that's the thing with this stuff. So like I was saying earlier, you know, you got to study. You know, people yes. want to just touch a little bit. I learned this one thing and that's it. This real estate goes long time. This is a vast area. Yes. That don't mean you have to know everything about development. That don't mean you need to know everything about uh, trust and uh, LLCs and all the different entities and stuff you can put the property in because all my properties are held in a trust for anonymity. Mm. Ooh. Can, we, can we delve into that? Just a, this is scope just a little yeah, bit. Sure. Why do you choose to lock your properties under a trust as opposed to under an LLC? Yeah, so basically, so especially when you're doing one subject to, uh, so if you're buying a house subject to existing financing, we close it in a trust because it transfers from the seller name straight into a trust. Uh -huh. And therefore, if, a, if it goes from a seller name on the deed straight into a trust, it prohibits the bank from calling the loan due. It prohibits the bank from calling the loan due. It's against the law for the bank to call that loan due. So that's just a legal loophole, that little strategy that you use when you're doing a subject to type deal. Um, I got to talk to you offline about a little something. Now I got an idea about a deal on the table. But, you know, we'll so like I said, <laughs> yeah, so basically, though, so I do put my in trust for anonymity because you don't know who owns it. A trust just throws the trustee's name. The trustee can be Bill Smith, some guy you know. A trustee can be an LLC, another entity of some type, a corporation or something. Uh, and then underneath that, the beneficiary can be you or another LLC. So you can have layers of protection. So the way mine is set up is, is, is titled in a trust, uh -huh. and LLC is a trustee, and then the beneficiary is another LLC that I have, and then underneath that, you'll find me. So there's layers of protection. 
So if you're looking to sue me, Tell you're practicing. <laughs> you want to sue me, you'll be practicing because you ain't getting nothing. I own nothing but control everything. That's what the rich do. That is, now that's solid. Yo, he just laid out some serious game. I hope y'all are taking notes. That was serious right there. That's right. Oh but that's, you know, that's why the rich stay rich. You got to learn what they do and get these strategies down and say, how they, why do they do that? It's the truth. Um, so Uncle Pete, first of all, hello, my Uncle Pete. How are you doing, darling? Uncle Pete asks, so when you do your paperwork, you put the trust name on the paperwork, Chris? I so the way, yeah, so the way I do mine is say, uh, if I'm, like I told you, I have an LLC that does nothing but hold title on property. It owns nothing. I created an entity to do nothing but to be trustee on different properties. So it, mine would say, uh, ABC LLC as trustee is the buyer. Uh -huh. Whatever the name of the trustee is as trustee as the buyer name on the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then when they close the title, you do another document called a warranty deed to trustee. So let me break it down a little bit for the trust. So trust is two documents. It's basically two documents. You got a warranty deed, the trustee, and you have a trust agreement. Warranty. Two separate documents. Mm -hmm. The warranty deed, the trustee, is the document that shows that it transferred from the seller to the trust. The trust owns the property, not you, mm -hmm. not your LLC. The trust owns the property. Yeah. So that document is recorded at the courthouse. That's the document that's recorded. All it shows is that this is the trustee and it transferred from this person. That's it. That's recorded. Then you have a trust agreement, a separate document that breaks down who are the beneficiaries, who gets this property in case this happens or whatever, who the, gets the beneficial interest. So another, uh, so you got those two documents, the warranty deed, the trustee, and the uh, trust agreement. And when you have that trust agreement, that property can stay in a trust forever. And say, if I want to sell that property, I can actually assign my beneficial interest to somebody else and not go back to the title company. Woo! Ooh. Woo! But that's going too deep. I don't want to dig too deep. Mission, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, Mr. L has an excellent question. She says, if you already have a property, can you quick claim deed it into a trust? You, know? you can transfer your property into a trust, yes, but it would not be a quit claim deed. Mm. A quit claim deed. It just means you release or relinquish your rights in this property. I'm just giving it up. Okay. And I tell people don't ever even buy property on a quick claim deed. Now, if somebody gave you a house, that's cool. But if you just, you know, going to buy one, never use a quit claim deed on a property buying it because you don't know what liens are going to be attached to that property. Oh. See, when you buy a house okay. with a quick claim deed, all they did was say, here, you can have my house. But whatever junk to come with it, the yeah. federal tax liens to come with it, the back taxes to come with it, the baby mama drama to come with it, whatever drama to come with that house, it stays with the house, and now you just inherited it, and you don't want that. No, I don't want you that. You want to buy a house with a warranty deed, if possibly. Gotcha. Y'all, we can just end a lot right now because those chefs that he just dropped, <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> that was worth it. Now, I want to go back. Amat said something. Amat, that would probably depend on the state. He said, how expensive, how expensive is it to set up a trust at all? A trust at all? Well, it all depends. You want to know how much it really costs to do a trust? That's what he's asking. Do you see that zero I'm putting up? That's how much. Paperwork. It's just a document that you record at the courthouse. It's really that simple. And I actually offer these documents that you need for any of these type of deals. The link's in my actual bio, yes. WokeRealEstate.com. WokeRealEstate.com. I have everything you can need for any of these type of deals. Okay, so now we have to put that as a pin. So type that in. What is this? And also your, oh, HBCU. That's my fam. Hey, HBCU Realty. Um, okay, there's so many questions here. One of them, where are those documents held? What website, my sweet? Where is it? Are you typing it in now? Yeah, I'm typing it in. Okay. <laughs> in the meantime, let me go back here and answer loads of questions. Okay. We answered Elle's question. Um, hey, what areas do you guys do in real estate? I'm in Northern Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C. Chris is in St. Louis, Missouri. We're both Missouri, investors. Missouri, I don't know. Um, Elle... It's the least guarantee and everything comes with it. Did I answer your question, finance mentor? I think I did. Country, we're in the USA. City, Washington, D.C. area. Um, 
Yes, Uncle Pete, yes. Um, he does need a seminar, but actually, I wanted you to plug your seminar that you're doing with Christina Spells. It's happening when? Plug, That's going to be happening yourself. in March. That's just what I was pulling up right now. Let me pull it up on this computer here on the the, the main screen. Okay, as you do that, I'm going to tell you all. While he's pulling that up, Chris pumps out awesome content on the regular. He has a YouTube channel. He has his Facebook group. He has his Instagram page. What else you got going on, Chris? Yeah, so you can find me on all social media outlets Everywhere. at Chris, Chris Monroe STL. That's right, Chris Monroe STL. There's Snapchat, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, you name it. All that and more at Chris Monroe STL. So this is the uh, flyer here, if you can see it. Let's see. Yes. That's coming up. That's coming up March 5th through the 8th. Yes. It's going to you got Christina Spells. You got yeah, the Guru. I love me some Christina. That's oh, I gotta have her on. Christina's the best. How should I adore her? That's gonna be my first actual uh, speaking event there out in public. Huh? Where is it gonna? Where Where is it located? Dear? It's gonna be in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. So it's like a <laughs> retreat. Yeah, there you go. That ain't even that far for you. That's easy. That's, that's light work. That's, that's a quick flight. Tennessee, that's not too bad. From D.C. That's light work for you. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, let's talk about that real quick. What's happening at that event? So, yeah, so that event is actually going to be, uh, it's, like I said, a, a couple days. It's a multi-day event where they're going to be uh, having some, we're going to come in, we're going to do presentations. They're going to have different breakout sessions where you can come in and actually pick our brain and say, yeah, how do we do this? And I didn't understand that one part. Can you tweak it a little bit more? Can you repeat it for me? We come on in and do that and get everything going. Um, then we have, uh, it's, it's actually a getaway. So it's like a, a basically a winter retreat. Yeah. So it's like a, a resort. Right off. Yes, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you're looking for an excuse to do a little traveling around the early part of March next year, yeah. there's your chance to do it. It's going to be great. And there's going to be some more speakers announced as well. So it's going to be a great event. And they're going to have, they're going to, I think your ticket comes with alcohol and food and some other stuff. Like it, it's a whole big it's thing. Like with, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to make it up. <laughs> they're going to feed you. It's a cup of food. I'm not coming. Ah, uh, <laughs> now hold so, on yeah. one second. Hold on, Provado Life is asking the million dollar question, which is, how can I get on your buyers list? That's the list you need to get on Chris's buyers list. How can you get on? How can Provado Life get on your buyers list, Chris? So yeah, just shoot me a message. I mean, I'm I'm really easy to find. I mean, I'm 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 probably one of the easiest people to reach out to on social media. I don't take a lot of um un, a lot of unnecessary DMs. That's why I created a Facebook group. So if you do have a specific question about a deal, I'd rather come in and answer so everybody can get the value from it versus just one you know one off. I can help one off forever, but in group settings, you can help more people become successful. And that's what I want to do. Yes, exactly, exactly. Hey Andrea, how are you doing? Andrea. Andrea? She's so sweet. Um, yeah, y'all, here's the thing. You guys are having so many questions and I feel like I've missed a lot of them. So here's what I need y'all to do. Hit the question box on the bottom and then it comes up as a huge bubble and then I can't miss it. So you have questions, hit the question box on the bottom, type in your question and then we'll just bring them on. We'll just ask them If on. you've got <laughs> questions, we've got answers. Yeah. Bring them on. Now I have my question, which is this. Now that you've acquired, so far you've acquired how many rental properties? So right now I'm holding nine properties. I'm holding nine properties. Yes! Trying to get that passive cash flow up past my monthly expenses so I can exit the rat race. I'm trying to retire in 2020. When I get that number up over $6,000 passive income for no reason, that's when I'm out the rat race, baby. I'm out of here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so that's the goal right now. I have to know this. Now that you're in a position where not only... You were an investor in both ways, right? You were wholesaling, you still are wholesaling, but now you have buy and holds. How has your viewpoint changed now that you have buy and holds, dealing with tenants and things of that nature? Has that aided in how you handle your deals? Yeah, so basically I, I offer a multiple offer strategy. I actually created a video just on this exact topic. So when a deal comes in or a lead comes in, a potential lead, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, screen them, see what's going on with their situation. And we offer them a multiple strategy offer. So it's like uh, we, we give them a terms offer, a cash offer, a lease 
option offer and we just say we can refer it to a, a real estate agent and list it. So basically we give them four offers for them to choose from depending on their situation. If it's a situation where we know that these other offers won't work or they're not really flexible, we tend to not even offer that stuff. We just tell them, you know, straight up what we can do. And I love the multiple offers transition, not transition, but tactic because they're not, they can't say no. Yeah, and no matter what. See, so, that's what so, so I'm going to drop a nugget. Y'all ready for a nugget? Oh, okay. Ready. Here we go. So when I'm asking all these questions, because I have a strategy, I, I ask about 50 questions before I ever make an offer on any property, approximately 50 questions or more. So say I'm talking to a seller and I'm on a closing call and I'm like, yeah, you know, what are you going to do if you're not able to sell this property, Mr. Seller? Mm -hmm. now, now they might say, well, I'm just going to rent it out. Now, you know, they just opened up the door that they might can rent it to you on a lease or a sandwich lease option where you lease it from them and then you lease it out to somebody else underneath you and you stay in the middle and get a passive cash flow on a house you never owned. So that's a little nugget. Hope that helps you out. Did that make sense? Yeah, that made perfect sense. No, yeah, that, so, was, that was nugget. That was a true nugget there. I appreciate it. So that's why it's so important to ask questions of these people. When you're on the phone with them and stuff, you got to know their situation because the numbers are going to be what the numbers are. But if you don't actually solve their problem, the numbers don't mean anything. I want to soothe that pain point, baby. What, what's your pain? Let me soothe it for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the question we have here is, do you wind up write up your own contract or do you have a lawyer do it? I draw up my own purchase and sales agreement. But like I said, everything I do as far as closing goes to a real estate attorney and then they, they wrap up all the rest of the stuff. Okay. They wrap it all up from there. I just, I just do the purchase and sales agreement and uh, maybe if they have a loan, I might do a authorization to release information, which is another document that you get just to be able to speak to the bank on a seller's behalf, just to get their payoff information, things like that. And you can get that document for free in the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. Y'all need to join the group. Once again, join the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. I'm just saying, I'm in it. I'm, I'm all up in that group. Next question is from my lovely Elle. She says, what is the best way that you generate your leads in your market? So, yeah, so we're generating leads a couple of different ways. One, I have a uh, band of signs across town, not enough, need to put some more out or get somebody else to put them out. That's what's the problem. I'm too lazy to put them out, but I need to get some more band of signs out. Um, I have cold callers. I actually have two cold callers over in the Philippines that I personally trained up to be good, become uh, really good speakers on the phone and actually know how to talk to sellers, ask the right questions and get the basics out of the way. So when they come to me, they're ready to sell. So when I get on the, if I get on the phone with somebody, they they already said they want to sell. We already know how much they owe. We already know, uh, you know, a lot of the basic stuff: bathrooms, bedrooms, square footage, water selling, all of that junk. Basics out of the way when it comes to me. So all I'm doing is a closing call. Nice. So um, cold calls, ringless voicemail drops. We do a lot of ringless voicemail drops. Uh, text message marketing. We text message blast out all these people and they cuss us out and all of that good stuff. Yeah, um, they cuss me out too, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing several streams of marketing. Oh, these hats, you wouldn't believe it, but stuff like this actually gets people to talk. Oh yeah, my granny wants to sell her house. I'm dead serious. And you can get you one at wokerealestate.com. So, <laughs> so hat, oh yeah, car magnets. Car magnets, they work as well. You can put them on the side of your vehicle or sign. That stuff all works. Creative marketing, and you want to be networking. Go out to some RIA meetings. Go out and talk to people. Let them know that, hey, I'm looking for some properties to buy. They say, how you doing today? I'm doing all right, but I'd be doing a lot better if I could find a few more houses to buy. Mm, like They're like, dang. Mm -hmm. So you got to open that conversation. Let people know what you do. I love that. I love that. Brown Spawn says, Duh. I think I think she means does the end buyer need to see the property prior to buying? No. Well, Every time I suggest them to go get it because they're buying the house. Buyer beware. Exactly. As is where is. Go check the property out. Inspect the property. Bring your contractors. Bring your uncle. I don't care. Just make sure you bring my money when it's time to close. Exactly, and it's up to the end buyer to do their due diligence on the property anyway. You have that written up in your contract, babe. So that's yeah. We suggest it, but it's. It's their responsibility. And when That's right. The bottom line is their is their problem. It's their baby. Is that it's their baby? And trust me, any wise investor is going to make sure they do the proper due diligence 
if they can't physically go there themselves, like he says, you send a representative to go and look at the property. Um, sometimes they can ask you to send pictures, which sometimes you can do that, send pictures of the property. But at the end of the day, it is their legal responsibility. Like like Chris says, it's their yeah. you sign on the deadline. That's your problem now. So yeah, a lot of times people go And that's the thing too, I will add. So when I do say I'm doing a wholesale deal, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures. I'm actually going to do a walkthrough video so they can actually have an experience of going through the property. So when they get a package from me to say a house is ready to go, they get all the pictures, all the walkthrough video, all of that stuff so they can see it. Because like I said, a lot of times I never even meet these buyers. Yeah. Out of the 17 wholesale deals I've done, I've only met maybe three sellers and maybe five or six buyers. I didn't meet them all. It was all about paperwork because real estate breathes through paperwork. So get your yes. paperwork straight. Yeah. People just in a way sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. They can mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Be like, no, nah, just just get this paperwork straight. Now, here's the thing. Let's just go back on this. Actually, what time is it? Because you know, Instagram they just cut you off. They don't even give you a timer anymore. What time is it? Uh, Looks like you got about twelve minutes or so. Oh, okay. If it's an hour, we've been going going a long time, huh? I know, I know. So here's the thing. My soapbox is the power of networking and connecting, right? Classic example, you and I, we met back in We Live back in, can you believe March? Wow, time flies. Back in March, right? Yeah, so, in Dallas, Texas. In Dallas, Texas, baby. I'm trying to get to Atlanta in 2020 because it's going to be lit. Atlanta's going to be fun. Atlanta's going to be fun. But okay, so here's my question to you. You said that networking is important. Give us three tips on how we can be effective networkers and building real connections. Because as you know, real estate is all about connecting with people. How do you do it, Chris? So basically, you just open up, you know, you introduce yourself a little bit, a little bit about what you do. But I always have a position of asking questions. Everything I do is about asking good questions. Whether you're on a phone with a seller, whether you're talking to a buyer, whether you're talking to somebody you're networking. So what do you do? They say, oh, I'm a real estate agent. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a wholesaler. I'm just trying to wholesale. What do you do? How can I add value to your life? What kind of problems have you been having? Try to provide value to other people because now they're more receptive to you and they see you as a resource that can actually help them. Like I said, real estate is a team sport. So you can grow your team on both levels, whether you're helping somebody or somebody's helping you. But I always try to see how I can help somebody else first. I always try to give first. I go in with the intent of how can I provide value to you before I even ask you for anything because I don't ask for much. So I'd rather just try to add value to somebody else before I ever ask for anything in return. I love that. Uh, so sorry, someone has a question. I just don't want to miss the questions here. Kelvin asks, after you have a property under contract, do you do a title search? I'll let you answer that, Chris. Yeah, so I turn it into the title company and they do a title search. But typically I try not to send it in before I get a buyer. Because uh, different buyers might be like, oh, I only use this company or only use that company. And everybody kind of picky on certain things. They only want to use the company they like because it can be a, a, a hardship. You know, when people buying in LLCs and stuff, they have them send over all these documents and all this yeah. stuff. And once it's on file, it's a lot easier just to use a title company that they know and trust already. So, you know, I've been through, what, eight or nine different title companies. So, you know, out of all those deals. So I try to stick with, you know, I try to see what the buyer wants to do most of the time. But some people do it to where they just work with one company. But like I said, I try to make it easier on them to make it make the deal go through without any hiccups, without any promises or problems. I just want to make sure we get to the finish line to get my check. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> that's a check. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, here's my thing. I want you to say this. Speak to the person that, because for you, and I had to brace this the right way because I don't want to sound disrespectful or depressing in any way. But for people who have been on this real estate game trying to do wholesaling for the past year and they haven't gotten their deal yet, or they've, they've had some hiccups, gotten some things under contract, but they fell through. What do you say to encouragement for people out there? Because there's been people out there. I know a lot of people personally, um, certain people here through the grand world who have been grinding for a minute and it's gotten real, but they haven't closed their deal yet. What do you have to say to them? Yeah, I would say keep on trying, and you got to talk to more people. You may not have enough 
leads coming in your pipeline to begin with. That's usually the biggest problem that a lot of people come through because like I was saying earlier, majority of the deals you come across, they're not going to work anyway. Whether it's the numbers won't work, it might be title issues we don't know about, uh, any surprises or any gotchas we don't know about. The dang on foundation can be bad, anything. So I try to say, you know, talk to more people, get more people in your pipeline so that that helps you get to the finish line. Because I had a lot of deals on the contract that didn't make it. Still to this day, there's deals that don't make it. You know what I mean? For whatever reason. The numbers don't work, something comes up, whatever. We don't know. But we try to get as many into the pipeline as possible so that we have a better chance. Because, you know, this is just a numbers game. If you're not talking to enough people, you're not going to close the deal anyway. I can tell you that already. You need to be talking to more people, touching more people, texting more people, ringless voicemailing more people. Whatever way you're doing your marketing, you got to get more people in your pipeline. If you're calling people straight off Zillow, I've gotten deals off Zillow, by the way. People talk bad about it, but I love Zillow. So, you know, uh, yeah, there's deals everywhere, but you got to know how to communicate with these people. So your deals off of Zillow, are those uh, for sale by owners, I'm assuming? Fizzbos. I love a Fizzbo. Fizzbo. Because think about it. Why are you even a, a Fizzbo to begin with? Why didn't you list with a real estate agent? True. I even asked him, have you ever thought about listing this house with a real estate agent? Oh, no, they're going to take too long. I want to sell it quick. Great. So let's go ahead and get this lowball offer dropped in on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> there's a reason when they don't want to put it with the real estate agent. Maybe they figure in their mind, I owe too much. Yeah. I owe too much or I owe what the house is worth or I haven't have enough. I don't have any equity in it. Perfect candidate for a subject to deal if they have a low monthly payment. You know what I mean? It just depends. And sometimes they could be greedy like they're saying there. They can be greedy, yeah, but that's their okay. problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to help them out and give them an offer and see how I can add value. It's an offer. The worst thing they can say is what? No, it ain't going to be the first time. It ain't going to be the last time. So I ain't worried about it. Yeah. So, okay. I know I had to make the most of these last 12 minutes here. But you know what? I think people, do you agree that we should have Chris on again? I think we should have Chris on the live again. I think we need to have like a part two. I think. Have some heart. Let her agree know. That we need to have a part two. Because this is too short. <laughs> this is way too short. Seriously. Thank you. Oh, there's another question lined up. See me in the. Have some heart. Let her know you want to come back. There we go. Yeah. Woo. I feel it. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, y'all, me and technology, now that you guys see my lovely wall, let me put my face back. And we're back. Okay, so, oh, this is my boy Mike. Mike says, with high equity property with a low mortgage balance, what approach would you suggest? Property needs updating. Okay, so high equity property, yeah, because you were in California, right, Mike? With low mortgage balance. Okay. So it's all about identifying the pain point for that seller, regardless of the mortgage balance. Regardless of any of that stuff, how can I provide value to you? What is the biggest pain for you, Mr. Seller? That's the real biggest thing. Because, like I said, if you can't identify that first and then solve it second, all of that other stuff don't mean nothing. I bought a house from a guy, no money down, 0% interest for on a 10-year balloon right here in South County, $139,000 house. All I paid was closing costs for this house. I paid $1,241 for a house. That was the closing cost. That's it. And I own a house now that I pay seven fifty a month on. Mm -hmm. I got a tenant in there paying me twelve fifty a month and it cash flows like crazy and they gave me eight thousand down on the front end. So that's why I say don't worry. I mean the numbers are important, don't get me wrong, but identifying that that problem for that seller. So my suggestion is identifying what is their real thing. Is it the monthly payment that's their problem? Because if it's the monthly payment, we can solve that. We can take over that payment for you. Gotcha. Now if it's like all oh, the house needs work all right, well, we take the house as is in current condition. We'll be responsible for the maintenance and repairs on this property going forward. How about that? Does that help you, Mr. Seller? So you got to find out what their problem is and provide value there. All that other stuff is just fluff. You know what I mean? Because you're not solving their problem. It ain't going to work no way. I need to move. So, so that's the reason. So like this house I got for no money down, 0% interest on a 10-year balloon, he was selling because he didn't want to deal with the house. He was an out-of-state owner, or not out-of-state, out-of-town. He lives about two hours away. Mm -hmm. He don't want to keep coming back to St. Louis messing with this house. That, that it's, a, it's a mile away from me. I can walk to it from here. So, you know, it's a beautiful four-bedroom house in South County. So I'm like, I'll take it. I, I found it driving down the street. Fizbo sign for sale by owners. I hit that U-turn so quick. I said, oh, no, Fizbo, let's get him on the phone. Let's see what's going on. So I gave him his purchase price of one thirty nine. I didn't beat him up on price because it was probably worth about one sixty nine or so fixed okay. up. And I sold it for that. I sold it for retail price on terms. 
So that's the thing about these terms deals. When you learn that type of stuff, you can beat the market. I beat MLS listing. I beat the rental market on everything I do. Every rental that I have out is beating the rental rate in the market. Every one of them. It might say it rents for six fifty. I might be getting seven ninety five because I'm selling it on terms. It's a different market, so that's why you know when you go into those creative type deals, it's a whole other world. It's not the same as the regular people stuff. Yes. See. Okay. Now, who? I'm trying to make sure I'm getting. Remember, guys, if you have questions, put them in the question box because I cannot keep up with these. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because okay. they're gonna cut you off in about seven minutes. Two. Yes, I'm going to be part two, three, four. He might have to be a weekly guest. We might have to have him on. Bring it on. I, I'm built for this stuff. As a matter of fact, before I go, I do want to let you all know, I am doing a live stream tomorrow night with uh, Miss E. Marie. She just closed a $140,000 wholesale deal. You heard me right. A one deal, hundred. it's almost 141000 actually. Is it's 140000 what is it? One hundred and forty thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars. That's a lot of dang old money for one deal, one wholesale deal, right here in St. Louis. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to be going over how to actually structure and do a deal um, with a, a deal that's on the MLS. So dealing with real estate agents, we're doing a, a video on that on Wednesday about five p.m. I guess that'll be six p.m. your time, five p.m. Central, six p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll be doing a live stream on YouTube. Okay, so it's oh, on okay. YouTube. It's on your YouTube. YouTube. Yep, it's going to be a live stream right on my YouTube channel. And then the following week, we're doing another uh, interview with a real estate agent who just closed her first deal from Driving for Dollars. All three of those are already scheduled and posted up on my YouTube channel right now, at Chris Monroe STL. The link's in my bio. At Chris Monroe. That's right. That's what I am on all social media. So I make it easy to find me. Chris yes. Monroe STL. Just yes. Google it and see what's come up. Will you meet Chris? Because I can attest. What you see? Is what you get because this is Chris all day. The only thing you're missing is Chris's hat. <laughs> Let me get you one. Wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> That's how I met Chris. Yep. In Dallas, Texas. <laughs> So, yeah, my YouTube is at Chris Monroe STL. If you go on my bio here on Instagram, all of my links is in my bio. Real easy to find, real easy to get to. Subscribe, and, uh, you know, you'll be notified when we go live. I do a lot of things like that. And you'll actually find on there, too, where I actually walk through some deals with people. Like, yes, they're actually currently going videos. through a deal. Yes, they've been really helpful to me, for real, Chris. They've been very, very helpful. Yeah, because it's real world, and they have real issues that you can actually solve right now, right live. Mm -hmm. I like to do stuff live because you can't fake live. You can fake all this other stuff. When you come on live, you got to hit right. You can't come in there swinging right. <laughs> oh, I don't want, I'm so petrified. Y'all, what time is it? I don't want it to cut us off because one time it cut me off and I couldn't see. Uh, it it looked like you got about five minutes. We got five minutes. So once again... Share with people how can they get in contact with you one more time. Yes, I'm really easy to find on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. Mm -hmm. There's Snapchat, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube. Mm -hmm. The Woke Real Estate Investors Group is another great place if you want to come in and learn more about creative real estate deals yes, like subject to lease options, wraparound mortgage, all of that fun stuff. We go in there and you see people actually asking questions and you, they get responses to their questions right on the fly most of the time. I actually also offer a coaching service where I actually coach people when we do weekly calls and I help them go over their deal on a weekly basis. And we talk about their deals, help them. I even help them negotiate deals. I talk to the seller on their behalf. Yeah, my partner here, you can't, you know, you get cold feet. I kind of help them through that, get their paperwork straight, get their business straight. Because it's like I said, real estate is a team sport. You got to get some people on your team that can do some stuff. You can try to keep doing this stuff and figuring it out, but you're going to stress yourself out forever. And can we get also some good add people that there's on your only team. but so many YouTube videos one can watch, okay? Exactly. So you have to dive in and get belly to belly with people. You have to. Got to take massive action. And the best way to take action I know is to just do it. And if you got somebody right there on your team that can help you get through those hurdles and problems, because they're going to come up, you're problem solving. You're going to run into some problems, but I run toward the fire. I'm like a fireman that's running toward the fire. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chris, are you coming to Atlanta in 2020 or are you still not sure yet? You know what? I'm not sure, but I probably am. Okay. I haven't even made plans. I haven't even got my ticket to go to uh, the other one in uh, in uh, in Las Vegas yet. I'm supposed to be going to that in a month, and I ain't even got my ticket or a flight or nothing. I was just looking at it this morning to I go to the uh, to Vegas, but life happened, man. Life happened. Yeah. Remember, I'm trying to get free like you, but at the moment, I still have a nine to five, guys. Let me keep it one hundred. Yeah. I still got a yeah. nine to five. So 
yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But that's why you got to learn that passive side. Because once you yes. learn that, you gonna, how many of them do you need before you're out of a job? I mean, I'm, I'm passively cash flowing about $2,000 a month now. So, you know, on real estate. So, I mean, that's just passive money that comes in every month. You know, that's going to take care of my living expenses. Exactly. So when I get that number up over 6000 like I say, I'm out the rat race. I'm done working. I'm really already semi-retired, but I'll really be retired then. I'll be able to travel and do more stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but I do not have a nine yes. to five. No. So what's in Atlanta? Oh, uh, We Live 2020. So Max Maxwell hosts a conference every year. We met, Chris and I met at the conference this year in Dallas, Texas. And next year it's going to be hosted in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, it's a really awesome conference. Really awesome. Yep. And, you know, yeah, Michelle, you know, we're in the DMV. So it's so easy to fly over to Atlanta. That's nothing. Chris, and there was oh, like 1,200 people there. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. The networking. Yeah, that was insane. Um. And Uncle Pete is asking, Chris, do you have a nine to five? I have not had a job since about 2011 or so. So I'm actually unemployable because I have multiple streams of income. I sell on Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook, LetGo. I have over 10,000 items for sale, like I was saying earlier in the stream. Uh, I've, I've always sold stuff like these products. These are private label products. You can't even get this. You got to order it from me, you know. So that's why, you know, and I have other stuff, too, that I sell online every day, seven days a week, even when you sleep. I love that. When you wake up, you got checks in the mail. I love that. Exactly. What What did they say? If you don't learn to make money in your sleep, you will work until you die. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And you know what? The bronze bomb says I have a nine to five. I don't plan on quitting until I can wholesale effectively. I hear you. I hear you. I suggest you to do that. That's yeah, smart. That's the wise way of doing it. And to be, well, my situation is different, but I don't think that even, even when I have the, the passive income coming where I could officially ex escape the rat race, I don't see myself quitting my job. Well, I mean, I see myself scaling back on hours, but I don't, I don't know if, it, if you got to take every month for ten thousand dollars, you'll quit that job. You don't know what I do. Huh? You don't know what I do. You wouldn't quit it. If you got to check every it's, month it's for fifty thousand dollars for me, it's fifty thousand dollars would you quit that job? You know, I'll, I'll scale back. I'll work like two days. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, well, you really never really quit. As long as you, I mean, and if you're doing something that does not feel like work, it's not really work. Like this to me isn't work. I can do this stuff all day, live streaming and talk about real estate, business and entrepreneurship and mindset, and getting your game right and getting your systems in order. I can go all day about this stuff. This is where I live and I live in this world. <laughs> but this is the world I created for myself. I so, yeah, this is the place to well, be. Chris, so freedom. You. Once you thank get that you. freedom, Chris, you'll love it. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, delay right now. Yeah, it's been to kick us off, probably. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it greatly. We'll we'll keep you guys posted on when we have our part two with my brother Chris. <laughs> I know Compass has. If you appreciate the live tonight, here's what you do as a thank you to Chris. What you need to do is stop what you're doing, go follow him. Number one. Then hit the link in his bio, go and follow him on his YouTube channel, then go on Facebook and join his Facebook group so you can learn all the tactics that he referred to tonight. Those are the three things you can do. So once one, go follow him, two, subscribe to his YouTube channel, and three, join the Facebook group. You will find me in there as well. So we'll see you That's guys next time. That's how we time. do it. Peace <laughs> out. Do what you do. This be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me.